Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the coagulation screen blood test. These are useful to interpret when you suspect a bleeding or clotting disorder in a patient, when monitoring anticoagulant therapy, for patients about to go to surgery, or for monitoring the synthetic function of the liver, since all the clotting factors we're going to learn about are produced by the liver. To understand what prothrombin time, INR, APTT and fibrinogen all mean, we first need to understand blood clotting. When a blood vessel gets damaged, our blood must react to plug up any gaps in the vessel wall to prevent significant blood loss. The first response is for platelets to aggregate at the defective site of the blood vessel wall. But this is only a temporary measure and requires the coagulation cascade to produce a fibrin clot to cover the defect whilst the blood vessel wall repairs itself. You don't have to memorise every step of this pathway, but it's important to have a rough idea of how it works in order to understand what PT and APTT mean. This section of the coagulation cascade is called the intrinsic pathway. It's made up of clotting factors 12, 11, 9 and 8. These activate each other in turn, so factor 8 can then activate factor 10. The extrinsic pathway is made up of factor 7 and tissue factor, which also have the function of activating factor 10. Factor 10 is the start of what we call the common pathway, whose aim is to convert prothrombin to thrombin, which in turn converts fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin is the end stage of this whole pathway, which will help form the blood clot. There are a few diseases that can occur when this pathway doesn't work enough, in other words, bleeding disorders, or when it's unable to be reversed, i.e. clotting disorders. We can also manipulate this pathway with medications. We'll have a look at all of these in a few moments. So now that we know about blood clotting, let's go back and learn about the coagulation screen blood test. Firstly, prothrombin time is a measurement of the extrinsic pathway, i.e. factor 7. An easy way to remember this is by thinking, play tennis outside, as in PT is extrinsic. A high PT means something in the extrinsic pathway isn't working, resulting in the blood taking a long time to clot. This can be because the patient is taking warfarin, which is a sign the medication is doing what it should. Warfarin works by inhibiting activation of vitamin K, which is an essential vitamin for the function of clotting factors 10, 9, 7 and 2. Vitamin K deficiency would also increase PT, since factor 7 is dependent on vitamin K. Liver disease will also increase PT, since all of these clotting factors are synthesised by the liver. And finally, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC which is a condition that causes excessive blood clotting all over the body, which quickly results in depletion of clotting factors and therefore eventually causes bleeding. International Normalised Ratio, or INR, is a standardised value of prothrombin time, created to account for differences in normal values of PT between testing methods. It's calibrated so the average INR across the population is 1. This is the test we commonly use to monitor warfarin. Activated partial thromboplastin time, or APTT, is a measurement of the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade, meaning factors 12, 11, 9 and 8. Remember, play table tennis inside. High APTT occurs when there is a problem with the clotting factors of the intrinsic pathway, resulting in the blood taking a long time to clot. We can see this in bleeding disorders, for example haemophilia, which is most commonly an inherited disorder of factor 8 deficiency, but can also be caused by deficiency in factors 9 or 11. Von Willebrand disease is the commonest inherited bleeding disorder, and it's a result of a deficiency in von Willebrand factor and factor 8. Antiphospholipid syndrome is a clotting disorder, but paradoxically causes prolonged APTT, 
due to its effects on the phospholipid used in the lab test. Heparin and warfarin will also prolong the APTT. Heparin works by activating antithrombin 3, which will inhibit thrombin and factor 10. The last thing to assess in the coagulation screen is fibrinogen, which is the precursor to our fibrin clot. High fibrinogen is pretty nonspecific. It can be a result of an inflammatory process, for example, sepsis. It can also be raised in cancer and trauma. Low fibrinogen can occur when it's been excessively used up by the body, like in DIC, or if not enough is being produced, for example, in liver disease. Blood transfusions will also decrease fibrinogen through dilution, since packed red cells from blood donations are low in fibrinogen. This table summarises the effects of common medications and coagulopathies on PT and APTT. Feel free to pause the video so you can read through them all. Please consider subscribing and liking the video if you found it useful. It helps my channel out massively and it allows me to keep making free educational content for you guys. Thanks for watching and see you next time.